Working conditions for Americans changed rapidly during the first half of the 20th century. Many people, including children, were forced to work shifts of 10 hours or more for very little pay, often in unsafe conditions. Political and social changes persuaded Congress to pass laws that would improve the lives of American workers. One such law, passed in 1938, was the Fair Labor Standards Act, or FLSA. Among other things, the FLSA required employers to pay workers a minimum wage, as well as additional pay for overtime. The law's drafters wanted to help workers nationwide, but had to work within the congressional powers enumerated by the United States Constitution. The Constitution's Commerce Clause grants Congress the power to pass laws regulating, quote, commerce among the several states, unquote. The FLSA therefore applied only to workers who were either engaged in interstate commerce or engaged in the production of goods to be sold in interstate commerce. The FLSA's constitutionality was put to the test shortly after its passage in United States v. Darby. Darby manufactured lumber in Georgia. Darby's company brought whole trees into his factory, cut the trees into lumber, and shipped the lumber out to customers in Georgia and other states. Darby paid his workers less than the minimum wage required by the FLSA and also failed to pay them overtime compensation. The federal government sued Darby to enforce the law. The United States District Court for the Southern District of Georgia dismissed the indictment, holding that the FLSA was unconstitutional. According to the district court, manufacturing was not interstate commerce, and Congress didn't have the power to regulate the employment of manufacturing workers. In Darby's case, all the lumber was cut at a factory in Georgia. Even if some of the lumber was eventually sold in other states, the employees themselves worked only in Georgia. The indictment against Darby, therefore, had to be dropped. The federal government appealed directly to the United States Supreme Court. The question before the court was whether Congress had the constitutional power to regulate the working conditions of employees who make goods to be sold in interstate commerce. The Supreme Court unanimously decided that the FLSA was constitutional and that Congress had the power under the Commerce Clause to regulate labor standards in connection with goods to be sold in interstate commerce. Justice Stone, writing for the court, acknowledged that manufacturing goods in a single place is not, in itself, interstate activity in the same way that shipping goods undoubtedly is. The FLSA applied to any manufactured goods that were meant to be shipped across state lines, even if some of those goods ended up being sold locally. Darby's factory workers made lumber that was meant to be sold all over the country, and just because some of the lumber was sold in Georgia didn't mean that the FLSA was inapplicable to those workers. A previous Supreme Court opinion on the Commerce Clause, set forth in Hammer v. Dagenhart in 1918, was at odds with this interpretation. Despite a famous dissent by the great Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes, the court had ruled in Hammer that Congress couldn't exclude goods made by child laborers from interstate sale, reasoning that the production of those goods wasn't itself interstate commerce. The court rejected Hammer and fully overturned it. Justice Stone wrote that Congress could regulate actions within a state that have a, quote, substantial effect on interstate commerce, unquote. It was within Congress's power to prevent goods produced under substandard labor conditions from competing in the national market, because that kind of competition would have a substantial effect on interstate commerce. Therefore, Congress could regulate the working conditions of employees manufacturing goods to be sold in other states. The FLSA was therefore constitutional. Darby was a landmark decision for both federal labor legislation and Commerce Clause jurisprudence. The FLSA remains in effect today, alongside a number of other federal labor laws. Darby broadened the scope of the Commerce Clause and increased Congress's power to pass economic legislation. This broadening continued over subsequent decades, although more conservative judges eventually began to rein in its scope. The Supreme Court notably restricted Congress's power under the Commerce Clause in the 1995 decision, United States v. Lopez. 